In today's video, I'll be talking about fear food challenges. I'm going to look at three different videos, one by Heal with Kalen, another by Miranda Rocks, and another by Jennifer Wood. The whole point of a fear food challenge is to eat the foods that you once feared, usually ones that are high in fat, high in sugar, high in calories, to prove that you have overcome orthorexia or anorexia. Is it necessary for recovery? Is it good entertainment? Or is it an excuse to eat really tasty food? I'm going to look at all three of these videos and I'll provide you my thoughts at the end. The point of this video is to learn more about eating disorders and to learn how to recover from them. All right, let's take a look. The first video is by Heal with Kalen. Let's see the fear foods that she eats in a week. And something that I might consider a fear food, you won't, and that's okay. I want to point out that everybody has different fear foods. Her fear foods are not what mine used to be. Miranda, Jennifer, Kaylin, they all have different fear foods. Everybody has different ones. It's kind of weird how it works. Some people fear yogurt. Some people fear bananas. Some people fear potatoes. Everybody's different. That's my point. Delicious scrambled eggs cooked in butter. Some bacon that I burned a little bit. She starts the day with eggs and butter. I think a lot of people start with eggs and butter. It's just, it's a lot of fat, a lot of oil. That might be a problem. I don't like eggs or bacon, but if you like it, go ahead. Mm, eggs cooked in butter just hits different, you guys. But eggs cooked in butter, okay, sounds like a lot of fat. Now, when you are orthorexic, anorexic, you're not eating a lot of fat because fat has a lot of calories, so you avoid those foods. So clearly, she has gotten over her fear of eating fat. But eating eggs soaked in more fat, that might be a problem. When I first started my eating disorder recovery, one of my biggest fear foods were nuts. Her favorite snack is chocolate covered almonds. I like almonds too, but I'm not sure about the chocolate covered almonds and I'm not sure about eating them all day. Basically what you're doing is you're taking fat and you're covering it in chocolate. Go easy on the portions with chocolate covered almonds. My advice, if you are hungry, don't eat chocolate covered almonds. Those are the least satiating thing. In fact, the more you eat, the more you wanna eat. If you have something sweet, if you have a snack, it only compels you to eat more of it. So why not have something that is really filling and satisfying, something with protein and fiber and water? I have one. There's no room on my plate for shame or guilt. No shame or no guilt? Very good. No, you should not have guilt or shame for eating anything. But as I'm going to point out, good nutrition still counts. Don't feel guilty or don't feel ashamed. If you didn't get the result that you want, assess the situation and ask yourself why. Tackling is fried food. I got so many requests. Now she's having fried food. Fried food is probably not the best option. I'm not a big fan of fried food. Fried foods are an inflammation bomb, okay? They're really damaging to the blood vessels. So if you're gonna have fried food, do it once in a while. A lot of these oils have a lot of PUFAs, polyunsaturated uh, omega-6 fats. You have too many of those and not enough omega-3s. That could be a serious problem. Everybody likes to demonize sugar and too much sugar is a problem, but too many omega-6s are also another problem. My advice, limit the fried foods. Yes, I know it seems like a lot, but we are frying. And then she mixes all of that oil with schnitzel or sausage. That's a lot of fat. And again, I'm not a big fan of these kinds of meats. Um, they're linked with various forms of cancer. I'm not a big meat eater myself, but if I'm going to have meat, it's going to be a very high quality form of meat, like grass fed meat, uh, something that's grown locally, preferably from a farm where I actually know the farmer. Be very skeptical about the source of the meat that you're eating. And if you're going to eat meat, don't eat sausage. And if you're going to eat sausage, don't fry it in more fat. One way to destroy a salad is to add a lot of high fat dressing to it. Here's a little hack for you. When you have a salad and you don't wanna eat it dry, pour some tomato sauce on it. It makes all of the, the vegetables really moist. It's actually not bad, but I think it's a much better option than ranch dressing. So I'm a, I'm a teetotaler, which means I don't drink alcohol, so I'm biased against alcohol. I think for overall health, limiting your alcohol intake is a good idea. I don't see a lot of good research that says that alcohol is really good for you. Maybe a few ounces of wine each week, but go easy on the alcohol. The diet world really demonizes bagels. I, I don't know why. I, I really don't get it. Diet culture demonizes bagels because most people don't need bagels. 
If you are sedentary and you're older and you're not doing a lot of exercise, you probably don't need a bagel, especially one that is loaded with cream cheese. So I have various opinions on diet culture, but unless you're running a lot, unless you're doing a lot of movement, you probably don't need a bagel at seven or eight in the morning. I'm not saying you should have no carbs at all, but for most people, it's not the best option. Eating disorder recovery is not linear. Recovery isn't linear at all. That's a good point. Uh, recovery is different for everybody and it's usually it usually doesn't come overnight you know, it's not like you have this epiphany and everything changes usually it, it is a gradual process it's a lot less glamorous than you think one thing i like about kaylin is that she makes a lot of her food she seems to enjoy cooking cooking is a great skill the less you eat out the better uh, you know i know restaurants are struggling right now but Man, use less oil. Whenever I go to a restaurant, I just feel like I'm consuming tons and tons of oil. So instead of going to Domino's or Little Caesars or whatever, she makes her own healthy pizza, which I think is great. So I am really hungry and Andrew's not home yet for dinner. So I'm gonna have a pre-dinner snack slash meal. I'm not sure about having a pre-dinner snack. I mean, do you need to eat a pre-dinner snack? Uh, especially one that is really high in sugar, like granola. Granola used to be one of my binge foods. It used to be a fear food back in the day, too. I wouldn't have granola because it was sugar and had a lot of fat. I just ate puffed cereal. Yes, I ate puffed cereal. But if you want to enjoy dinner, come with an appetite. Why would you drench your appetite in granola and yogurt? But overall, it's a pretty good meal. That's one of my favorite combinations. So I know a lot of people, my past self included, I like that she refers to the past self. I think changing your identity is a big part of recovery. Uh, when you link your, uh, your ED to a previous version of yourself, then you can link good habits with your present version of yourself. Saying things like, I used to do that. I used to behave that way. I used to have an ED. Those are all ways of changing your identity. Um, I realized that almond milk is honestly not my jam. I don't think that it's that great. I really like soy milk. I really like, um... She doesn't like almond milk, and honestly, I don't like almond milk either. I think it is way too bland. It is not thick enough. That's why I use regular soy milk. You can also try cashew milk. I haven't tried that yet. Um, oat milk, I hear, is pretty good. A little higher in sugar, but you need something that's thick. If you really want to go all out, have coconut milk. That's really thick. Um, try to tune out diet culture. Diet culture has a heavy emphasis on dairy and how dairy is, is very bad for you. She, diet culture says dairy is bad for you. Well, a lot of physicians think dairy is bad for you. A lot of nutritionists think dairy is bad for you. A lot of doctors and nutritionists don't think dairy is bad for you. So I think the verdict is still out. But where does diet culture end? I think this is my big problem with this whole crusade against diet culture. What is diet culture? If a physician says, based on my research, dairy is not good for you, is that diet culture? I'm not sure. Where does diet culture end and where does science start? Diet culture to me is saying that everything comes down to calories. You should have the lowest calorie version of this. You should have low salt this. You should have low sugar this. You should have low fat that. That is diet culture. But if the research really does say that having fried foods and dairy is not good for you, then you shouldn't do it but just a regular pancake made with white flour, sugar, and all the good stuff. So pancakes are a favorite breakfast. They're filled with sugar, eggs, uh, what else? Flour, and then you drench it with more sugar. For most people, it's probably not the healthiest thing. Pancakes should be a treat, maybe something you have once in a while, but I sure hope this is not a daily breakfast. Also, I used real syrup, not that Walden Farms or that sugar-free stuff. Oh man, Walden Farms. I used to buy Walden Farms too. So this is diet culture. It's when you buy these fake versions of the real thing. So Walden Farms, they make these like fake salad dressings. It's like ranch, but it has zero calories in it. Well, if it doesn't have calories in it, what is in it? It doesn't sound very good to me. So she buys real maple syrup, which is in line with my philosophy. You either have the real thing or go home. Chop up this bad boy. And I'm also going to dip it in some Nutella. Nutella was one of my biggest fear foods. No, don't dip your apple in Nutella. It's like pouring all of that ranch dressing over your salad. You had a perfectly fine apple and then you dipped it in sugar and oil. Look on the back of Nutella. The first two ingredients are oil and sugar. I don't even know what kind of oil it is. And then 
uh, on the very end you see like cocoa butter or, or something. Don't use Nutella, Nutella is terrible. Because food doesn't have any kind of moral attachment to it. No, food is amoral, correct. There are no inherently bad foods, there are no inherently good foods. Food is completely amoral, but that doesn't mean that some foods aren't better than others. Some foods should be consumed more than others. Some foods should only be consumed once in a while. I think it's safe to say that most Americans and Canadians consume too much flour, too much added sugar, too many processed foods. Obviously, it's going to take time to rebuild and have a healthy relationship with food. Healing your relationship with food does take time. Correct. It's just like recovery. Most things, most processes take time. Whether you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to gain weight or whether you're trying to recover, most things take time. I'm still really hungry, so I'm gonna have a piece of bread and butter as a snack. One thing I notice about this video is that she's snacking all the time. Why is she snacking so much? Is she not eating enough at her? Why? What's with all the snacks? I don't get it. She talks a lot about intuitive eating, and one of my complaints about intuitive eating is that you can justify anything with intuitive eating. If you wanna have a bunch of unhealthy snacks, you can say to yourself, well, I'm just following my intuition. It's like the ultimate trump card. How do you prove somebody isn't following their intuition? You can justify any form of eating with intuitive eating. Like everybody just, ha everybody seems to have their own definition of what intuitive eating is. I'm eating intuitively, I'm eating intuitively. I guess my problem with intuitive eating is that there is no objective standard. She has meat, fries, and sauces all in one meal. Um, looks like a fast food meal to me. It's just made at home. Again, I would limit the fried foods. Fried foods are highly inflammatory. I don't care which oil you use. Honey bunches of oats. I love anything honey. And then she has some sugary cereal. This used to be a fear food and then later a binge food. Maybe I shouldn't have made it a fear food in the first place, but... Uh, sugary cereal is always a great thing to binge on. It's always great at night. I loved eating it out of the box because I could fool myself and tell myself that I didn't really eat that much. I'm so hungry, so I'm gonna have a second bowl. And then after the cereal, she has popcorn with butter. It just seems like she's always eating something. Now, maybe she's filming this on a different day. Maybe that's not what I'm catching here, but if she's having the cereal and then the popcorn and the butter, Man, was the dinner not satisfying? What is going on? On some veggie chips. I think it's surprising that she has veggie chips. Veggie chips is something that a dieter would do because I don't want to have real potato chips. I want to have something that looks and seems healthy. If you're going to have veggie chips, why not just have the real potato chips? This one was shocking to me. It really was quite shocking because veggie chips, they have the word veggie in it, but it's really just fried food. I baked some chicken. We have some potatoes. And at the end of the day, she has fatty chicken, butter, cheese, and oil. That is a lot of fat. All right, thanks, Kaylin, for that video. Let's move on to our second video with Miranda Rocks. All right, confession. I used to drink whipped cream, too. I remember I would just find it in the refrigerator and go like that. Uh, and I thought it was pretty light, but one little squirt is like 50 calories, and then you do that times five or six, the whole can, and you consume quite a bit. So yes, I have drank whipped cream. What is it, like Ready Whip or whatever it is? Yes, so I've done that. This is my sixth Oreo. I'm going to the nutrition school. Why do you need six Oreos? I don't know. The first one tastes great. The second one is kind of exciting. After the third or fourth, it's all the same. So here they are. That looks really awesome. Banana chocolate chip pancakes. Now, would I have this often? Probably not. It's a lot of flour, it's a lot of sugar. And yes, there is nothing bad about flour and sugar and chocolate chips. It's just not something that you should eat too often. I also have almond butter if I wanna put almond butter on it. But don't forget the whipped cream with the almond butter. This looks really good, really good. Miranda, if you're watching, send me the recipe. Whoa, 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 go easy on the whipped cream. Easy on the whipped cream there. I'm not a big fan of coffee, but I know a lot of people are. I can't imagine spending five or six dollars for one sugary drink. It must be really good. I figured one grilled cheese wasn't enough, so I'm gonna have two. Not one Swiss cheese sandwich, but two. 
If you watch my previous videos, you know that I hate cheese, so I'm really biased here. Um, I just, I can't imagine eating that, but if you're really into cheese, go ahead. If you're gonna buy cheese, it's like me. Make sure you buy a good quality. Buy better cheese, but eat less of it. I'll figure it out. Maybe I should dip it in egg to make it extra intense. Yeah, I'm sure dipping it in the egg will make it extra intense. It's kind of like French toast, dip, dip, dip. A little more fat. Everything tastes better with more fat. This looks really good. I like this one. Uh, I'm not sure about the, the chicken. I'm kind of skeptical of chicken. I'm, I'm trying to wean off chicken. I'm, I don't trust the sources most of the time, but you combine that with a starch and then some mixed vegetables. That looks pretty good to me. Although I would leave out the egg at the end. That's the only thing I would change. So I got Magnum. Funny enough, I was scrolling through this one is surprising. Why does she have a non-dairy ice cream bar? Why doesn't she have a real one? Maybe she's lactose intolerant. I don't know. Maybe she is. That's the only thing I can think of because if you're trying to eat your fear foods for a day, why not just go all out and get the dairy ice cream bar? Why not get a Klondike ice cream bar? Thank you, Miranda, for that video. Now let's go across the pond and let's see what Jennifer Wood is eating. Since like Christmas, I've had a really strong urge to restrict and compensate for what I ate over Christmas. Restriction after Christmas or any big occasion is pretty typical. Now remember, Jennifer is still in the recovery process, whereas Kaylin and Miranda, they were not in the recovery process. They were post-recovery. So that temptation to restrict after one or two weeks of indulgence is really tempting. I usually started January 1st, like everybody else. I did well the first two weeks, if that. And then I would fall off the wagon again, and then mid-January was exactly like the end of December. But the temptation to restrict when you're in the state is really, really high at the end of the year. I am going to be having two types of cereal. She doesn't have just one sugary cereal, she has two, and then she mixes them. I don't think I've ever done that. That's an interesting recipe. Does she mix regular milk with chocolate milk too? I'm having a nice big bowl just to scare the eating disorder, I guess. I like that she says she's scaring the eating disorder. She's scaring it, okay? Th yeah, this will scare it. If you have two different types of uh, cereal, if you have anything that is dense, if you have anything like cereal or bread or anything high in fat, you will scare it. At first, it's scary to eat these kinds of foods, but then, like anything, you get better. I used to um, have water in my cereal sometimes, and I don't think I ever did that. I don't think I ever poured water into my cereal. That's a new one. I've never done water and protein powder. I know some people like water and protein powder. I find that horrible. That is a horrible combination, but water with cereal. I used to do sugar-free almond milk and it kind of, it was a little better than water, but not much. Recently, I have been told that I am allowed to do a little bit of sport. One of the great things about recovery is that you can go back to the things that you want to do. You have more options, you have more flexibility, you can do the things that used to bring you joy in life. Your world goes from this to this. So it is snack time now and I'm having a, oh, upside down, fulfill bar. I have mixed feelings about protein bars. Yes, I eat protein bars, not every day, sometimes. Uh, but I, I think we're sold this idea that we need more protein, more protein, more protein. Then they come up with these really exciting flavors like cookie dough and cookies and cream and chocolate peanut butter and say, hey, here's your protein. It's almost like a Snickers bar with more protein. But whatever, she's in the recovery process, have a protein bar. Um, but I have my Subway here. I've got a six inch um, salad sandwich and a packet of Sun Bites. Notice she's having a six inch sandwich, not the 12 inch. She's, um, she's not doing a 10,000 calorie challenge here. And then she has some chips and then a uh, regular soda. Yes, a regular soda. That is a big step for her. And we're in a car park right now. And a couple of months ago, I would have been... Another thing she's doing right here is she is rejecting compulsive exercise. She's, she's rejecting compulsion altogether. That's what anorexia is. It's compulsion. I feel like I have to do this. You have so much control, you don't really have control. So we're stopping off at McDonald's to get a McFlurry. Literally, like my brain was just telling me, you've had half, you've had half, you've had three quarters, you've had three quarters, stop, stop, stop. 
The McFlurry, according to her, was the most challenging thing she's had so far. Yeah, I can see that. It is a big thing of fat and sugar with little pieces of candy on it. For the longest time, I had this craving for Sonic. Now, it's a fast food chain here in the US. You pull up, you press the button, and then the, uh, what do you call it, the bellhop? Or not the bellhop, but the, the server comes to your, your car and delivers it to you. It's kind of old fashioned in a way. But every day, for months at a time, I used to have the Sonic Blast, and it was just full fat, full sugar, with lots of candy in it. I had to have it. Her brain was saying, stop, 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 but she kept going anyway. I think, I think she's gonna recover. I think she's on the right path here. She's stopping the compulsive exercise. She's eating a lot of fear foods. And when her brain says stop, she keeps going, which is what you have to do in recovery. I think it's a salmon and broccoli quiche, so it sounds really nice. A toasted hot crust bun, that sounds really, really good. I think it's really good that they are eating fear foods. I think it's great that they are overcoming their past limitations. I'm glad that they are saying yes when their brain wants to say no. I'm glad that they have a lot more options. I'm glad that they're cooking things. I'm glad that they don't live in this confined world. I'm glad that they overcame their fears. There's a lot of good things about this video. My concern is that this is their typical long-term diet. It's one thing to do this while you're in recovery to prove once and for all that you've overcome your fears. It's kind of like when a football player reaches the end zone and he takes the ball and he slams it on the ground. Like the player is making a statement. You know, he, he's saying, oh, I got into the end zone. Well, when you eat a fear food and you've been restricting for a long time, it's the same thing. You're making a statement. So if the goal here is to make a statement and show how you've recovered and you've overcome your fears, I understand. But this shouldn't be a long-term diet. There is a lot of oil in here. There's a lot of flour, a lot of sugar, a lot of snacks, a lot of snacking, uh, a lot of extra meals. Regular soda is probably not the best thing to have. Eating enormous portions of food, especially ones that are high in fat and high in sugar, are not great for overall weight maintenance. Maybe I'm missing the point of these videos. Maybe in a typical day, they eat foods that are lower in fat and lower in sugar and are less exciting overall. When you recover, don't fall for what I call diet nihilism. And I did that for a while where I thought, you know what, scientists and doctors, they can't agree on what's, what's healthy. He says one thing, he says another thing, she says one thing, she says another thing. I'm just gonna eat whatever, it doesn't really matter. But the truth is it does matter. We should follow the research as best as we can. We know that fried foods are highly inflammatory. We know that sugar sweetened beverages like soda are linked with every comorbidity and every long-term disease. We know that diets that are high in sugar and flour are not good for overall long-term health. We can't ignore science. We can't ignore nutrition. This stuff is real, like the results are in. Some things are open for debate. Uh, are lectins bad for you? I don't know. Uh, is dairy bad for you? I don't know. How much meat should you eat? I don't know. Which foods are linked to cancer? I, I don't think we're really sure. Don't disregard good nutrition in the recovery process. If you want to make a statement once in a while and say, I'm going to have a McFlurry just to show that I can do it, fine. But don't have a McFlurry every day. Another thing I want to point out is that if you are pre-recovery or in recovery, you don't have to have your fear foods. You don't have to have anything. If there's something that you want to exclude from your diet, that's fine. There is no rule that says that you have to have absolutely everything. You're not recovered until you have a McFlurry, until you have a Sonic Blast. You've recovered when you feed yourself appropriately every day. I know these videos are fun to watch and they're entertaining, but recovery and reality is a lot more mundane and boring. These videos are not as mindless and stupid as those 10,000 calorie challenges. Those videos serve no purpose whatsoever. At least these videos are showing us what is possible. They are showing us that you can overcome your fears. I think the premise is good. I just don't think the composition of the diet is good. Personally, for me, I don't have any more fear foods. There's no food that I fear. They're just foods that I prefer not to eat. There are some foods that I choose to exclude from my diet. I minimize added sugar, I minimize flour, I don't eat a lot of fried foods, I don't eat out much at all. And when I do eat out, I am mindful of the nutrition, I am mindful of the oil. 
I'm also glad that they enjoy their food. I'm glad that they experiment with new things. I'm glad that they like cooking. Those are all very positive aspects. I think eating your fear foods in abundance is intuitive eating taken to the logical extreme. And if that's not the logical extreme, maybe the 10,000 calorie challenges. What do you think about the fear food challenges? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my links below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.